as we have light go in and out. That's gonna be my clapper. So uh, every once in a while, when I make some noise, uh, we'll probably get some light uh, outage and whatnot. But um, I just wanted to talk with you guys real quickly. Um, well, maybe not quickly because I get long winded sometimes. But I just wanted to talk to you about a subject, a topic. Um, and this is really geared for um, maybe the young people um, in regards to uh, who they are and what they can do and what they're capable of doing um, when they uh, get organized, have communication, and uh, a focus, a primary focus on something. Um, for me, uh, I, I've been working with young people for my whole uh, career, um, off and on, doing some different things with youth at all different ages, all around the world. Um, if you don't know, um, I'm an ex-professional athlete, um, and I used to do some things um, all over the world, so I've had some great opportunity to uh, get involved with uh, young people. So, you know, what I would like to talk to you guys about primarily today is the topic and discussion piece of um, student activism. Um, students getting involved, students being active, students getting um, their... Uh, their, their message heard um, from their communities um, throughout the world. Um, today, uh, it's it's very easy to get a, you know your message heard if you have the right format, platform, and you have something that you've said that you've done your homework on and done some great research. And I think that's important um, key elements to have within uh, being able to be heard. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways that people um, are giving you their content. Social sites, uh, phone, computers, um, podcast, uh, video, uh, audio. Um, it's just, you know, you can choose your gambit of what you want to do and how you want to go about it. But for me, um, I wanted to specifically talk about students who have gotten organized recently um, here in our community and just really represented student activi activism um, in a positive way. And I want to make sure that it's a positive approach that you have with activism because um, there's a, so many reasons why and how people can tune you out uh, when it comes to um, you getting involved and doing some different things and your message being lost in translation. Um, I want to talk about what that really is. What is activism? What does it represent? You know, what's the definition of it, if you will? And I came up with this uh, as the definition, activism. Activism consists of efforts to promote, um, impede, direct, and intervene in social, political, economic, or environmental reform with the desire to make changes in society. One more time. Activism consists of efforts to promote, impede, direct, or intervene in social, political, economic, or environmental reform with the desire to make changes in society. And uh, that's really the one-on-one -on, -one on uh, activism and what it means. And the reason why I chose this is this is something that happened recently in our community, as I said earlier. Uh, some high school students got together, um, and they had positive activism within their school, uh, within their community, and uh, uh, probably also as nationally as well um, as they continue on with their journey and how they went about their activism. So I want to go through with you the, the steps of activism and what that really looks like in a way just in case you may be as a young person interested in doing something having change um, within your school and now when I talk about change I'm talking about rules guidelines maybe laws policies these all are under the hat um, from a students perspective and social change uh, within possibly the schools that you have going on and one of the main things that you have to identify is what is the cause or the injustice that you're trying to change. You know, what do you want to have happen? You know, how do you want to affect policy? How do you want to affect the guidelines? How do you want to affect the rules um, and the laws that uh, you feel that uh, have a need for change or improvement um, um, or emphasis of focus on maybe how it affects you? Um, once you do that, the second step, I believe, is what you need to do is uh, understand how the problem affects you. You know, what does it do? What does it re refrain from you to do? What does it uh, impede you to do? 
um, as far as your student's perspective or a person's perspective um, when it comes to these policy, these rules, and some different things that have uh, have happened or happening in your um, classroom um, within your school um, or maybe with the outside your school in the community surrounding your school. Um, these are the things you have to understand. What what is it? How is it affecting you? How, you know, you need to come up with a list um, or a category of things that give you the effect of these policies, these guidelines, these rules that are affecting you in a way that is uh, negative um, that you would like to see change. And then the third step, um, and it's very important step, but mind you, is you need to do your research. You need to find out the facts. You need to find out what the rules are, what the law is, what the policy is, what does it say uh, in, in, in a way that you understand it, and most importantly, you can have other people understand what you've done to understand it. So you're able to eloquently um, talk about it in a way that gives you uh, expertise, that gives you credibility uh, when it comes to doing that. That's very, very important. Um, if you can get numbers behind those facts, if you can get uh, examples behind those facts, uh, you're in good shape in being able to be an influencer um, of the change that you're looking for. Um, and then the fourth step is what can you do to affect the chain, what can you do to improve it? You know, what are the answers? You know, a lot of times uh, people are really uh, very adamant about talking about how things are hard or what the problem is and, and, and this and that, but you know, not very many people sometimes come up with the answer, the solutions. And if you're just talking about the problems, talking about the problems, that's great. But just as much and just as passionately, um, you have to focus on what are your solutions, you know, what are the answers to uh, what you're bringing up to, pe uh, to play when it comes to um, the facts that you presented, the, the, um, the, the stance that you're in, what are, the, what are the things you can back it up with when it comes to that. And then five uh, is kind of an internal process. This is where you need to make sure that whatever skills you have individually or as a group, um, or as an organization in some cases, uh, what is it that you have? What is your ability? You know, are you guys uh, good orators? Can you talk the gambit and really have a great discussion? Can you uh, really do some great writing um, and really have it in a piece where people, you can get this thing out in a way where people can see it? Is that your strength? You know, what is your, your, your knowledge or your way of being able to go about expressing the change that you want and how it has affected you. What can you do? What is your format, if you will, uh, of strength to be able to present uh, what you have going on? And I think um, when it comes to change, you know, we can all do things on our own, but the more people you have involved, uh, the better effect you'll have within that and probably the momentum you can create when it comes to um, really affecting that change and getting yourself in a situation where uh, you, you can uh, have some progress within that. Uh, most importantly, um, when you talk about those types of things, uh, you want to also find out who supports you. And so when you have someone supporting you, um, when you get involved with that, uh, it's important for you to, to surround yourself around people, surround yourself around people uh, that, that believe in you, um, that want to see the best of you be successful um, when it comes to something that's important to you and have that compassion um, to give you uh, the strength to be able to move forward when it comes to doing that. Um, and then, you know, on the sixth step, uh, and possibly the final step in that is, you know, find out what the obstacles are in play, the institution, the rules. Find out kind of really how it will affect your ability to be able to express that. And that will make sense to you when I give you this example here in a moment, but there will be obstacles in for example, let's say you your, your strength or your skill that you want to use as your format to really present yourself. Let's just say that you don't have, um, you're a great writer and you don't really have a newspaper uh, uh, entity that you can really supply this information to. You don't have a format uh, in a way where people are going to see it on a mass level. And so you need to find out those types of obstacles and find your way around that. And again, going back to what I said at the very beginning, uh, when you have uh, social media and you have some different things that you can uh, really utilize in today's world and the technology, um, you can pretty much get around a lot of these obstacles um, that didn't exist uh, 
uh, you know, as far as answers existing for you just a few years ago. Now you can really get your message out there in a way that a lot of people um, have contact. Now, and then, you know, when you're doing that, that will give you the opportunity to expand your discussion, to get the opportunity to follow up, um, and give you um, cool success, you know, It'll give you some success. And whether it's one person, two people, three people, uh, 400 people, 500 people, 1,000 people, a million people, you'll have some success when you go through those steps. Um, and when you have those steps, those really create positive change, positive activism and what you got going on. Now, the example that I wanted to give to you that, um, that these steps were followed through um, in an expert way that made it really, really special was just recently here in our community, uh, a high school um, here uh, just the other day did a walkout. Um, so there's about 100 or so, maybe a little bit more students who participated in this event, and they did a school walkout. And what they did was, uh, first, they um, had the subject of what they wanted to change. And this happened to be, um, they wanted to f address the problems of gun violence. Okay, So that was their premise of what they were doing this for. And their message was that they are trying to send to everyone is that there hasn't been enough done when it comes to uh, affecting change and affecting gun violence. And so... Um, they did a, uh, what I think is called the March for Live School Walkout, officially, um, here in Michigan. And I believe this is something that it's not just a localized just in Michigan, but it's a national event that some other high schools have done um, in the past. And so, um, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing when you see young people uh, get together and really are able to really organize themselves in a way uh, to have change, and this was a great example of that. So they did the March uh, for Lives school walkout. Um, I did it last year as well, um, and I believe that they had a few more people than last year uh, get involved. Um, and uh, what they did was, first off, they got the principal's permission to be able to get organized and do that. So they had the support of the institution. They had the support of the people that would, would be uh, people that could be obstacles in their way of going about what they got going on. Um, and so when you think about the steps that I went through, um, you know, identifying your cause, who does the, the problem that, or the cause that you're trying to change affect, you know, research your facts, uh, what do you do um, to affect the change, how do you improve the process, the progress of what you're doing with the format you have, what are your skills? What are your abilities? How can you do this in a way that most most represents your strength and being able to get that message out and find out what the obstacles are? So what they did was first they went to the principal, and the principal uh, gave them a permission because the permission they probably did the homework, they did the research. It was an important issue that affected the school, the community, and their families, and so it was something that they were able to probably present in a way that. Uh, they cleared those obstacles. They cleared that hurdle and something that, as opposed to just kids talking about, hey, you know what, let's just go and walk out. Now, if they would have did that without talking with the administration and talking with the teachers and, and really doing their homework about why they're doing that and, and really getting that message out there, that probably would have been something that would have been a not a, a positive activism um, component. But because they went through the network system and they utilized their skills, they talked with some people, communicated in a way, uh, they were able to have this blessing of the administration. And so, um, and in fact, the principal, here's what the principal said about it. Um, and this is a quote. They have a lot of power, and their power will make themselves and others a big difference in the world. So that's what the principal said about them doing what they did. And that was really awesome because that came from, you know, the top, the top of the school as far as administration is concerned. A student talked about, uh, uh, even if this is just in your schools, starting a dialogue with classmates is incredibly impactful for them and everyone else around them. So they were able to take uh, their platform, um, get local attention from the media, uh, get on the news, and be able to utilize a platform in a way where their message was heard by more than people just in the community around them because the way they went about that, the way they, way they did their homework, the way they presented themselves in a way that suited their strengths. And we're talking about kids here. We're talking about 15, 16, 17-year-old kids 
who are getting actively involved in a positive way. And I just thought that was pretty awesome um, doing that. Uh, protesting the lack of action of gun violence. You know, a lot of people know about this topic. A lot of people know about the issues when it comes to that. And um, for them to be able to do that as young people um, is an incredible thing. Um, one of the main things they did in order to um, really get others on board is they made t-shirts and they sold them prior to the event happening so there was a representation also visually so when the news media came out there and, and some of the local reporting crews uh, really interviewing them they were representing the t-shirts that they sold and they sold those t-shirts and the proceeds of those t-shirts went through I believe a nonprofit organization that specialized in focusing on gun violence um, and, and really the issues around that and so um, that's a great great example of how the students um, who usually are traditionally viewed as people who don't have power um, or a voice uh, really get made a voice made things happen got themselves on the news got some local exposure um, some national exposure um, they plan on doing this every single year um, they did it last year this is the second year that they did this and I just had to speak on it I just had to talk about it and I just thought it was something that was important that um, uh, should be as a template for a lot of kids who feel like or organization or groups of kids who feel like they don't know where to start and how to get involved with some of the rules policy laws um, um, that and guidelines within their school within their community that really impede them from really having that voice and this is the way you can do it this is the way you can do it in a positive way this, I really believe that this is something that you can use uh, as steps in a process that's bigger than you um, and really promote that change so um, I just thought it was important this you know this was just a little discussion a little conversation I wanted to have with you today um, and I hope that you guys got something out of it um, and uh, your time was well spent listening to what I had to say appreciate you. Chuck Grigsby, GUNI Worldwide Educational and Community Events is what I represent. Um, I work for Primetime Mentoring and Tutoring Educational Services. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization that's really designed to help kids with their academics and tutoring um, and mentoring uh, services with that. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, something that is a big umbrella under what we've been doing for the last few years here. And uh, I just really appreciate everyone that's supporting us and what we're doing. Um, and I'm just going to randomly pick topics like this and just really talk with uh, the young people in regards to how you can do things um, in a way that really promote long-lasting change, positive change, and gives you that voice, that communication uh, voice, if you will, in a way that uh, maybe you'll be heard. You know, maybe you'll create that uh, change, that effect that you're looking for. Um, Chuck Grispe, primetime is the right time .org. If you want to look us up and see what we do specifically, primetime is the right time .org. And I appreciate you guys and the time that you've given me today. Thank you guys for the